Welcome back. This is the follow-up video to the original video that I made on the Photo Microscope 2 by Zeiss. In that video, I stated that I was going to talk about the separate parts of the microscope, what I had to do to repair it from sitting for so long, and just what kind of functions does this microscope have. And today, we're going to be talking about the stage and stage movement, which was uh, a big complicated part of this microscope to work on because of the solidifying of the uh, grease and oil that was used. But to start off, I'm just going to take off this main stage, which just lifts off like that. It's quite heavy. Um, so this is the main stage. Let me see. Yeah. So this is the main stage. Of course, you have the, uh, the dials on both sides. This one moves it in the Y position, and this one moves it along the X. Uh, now this was nearly completely seized when I when, when I got the microscope. Um, so it took a lot of, I had to take it completely apart down to the bare tracks and uh, pinion gears. And I was able to um, grease it with a lithium grease and it really made uh, the whole difference. Except for that, the stage is relatively free of scratches and it just, it works really smooth. I had no issues with um, teeth being jacked up on it or anything like that. It works very, very well and almost better than, than more of the um, new microscopes that we have at the college. So let me put this back on real quick and I'll show you another feature that I really like that you don't find a lot. So this microscope has the capability that when you loosen this little, this little screw over here, for it to rotate, uh, it rotates roughly 300 degrees before it hits any of the knobs. And this is a nice feature. Uh, if you want to look at something or take pictures of something um, and you want to flip it over, well, if you flip it over, you could lose the adjustment you have on the stage. And you can also do this while the objectives are in place. And you'll notice that I have the objectives out of place at the moment. They're sitting on the table next to me so that I can show this in better detail. But uh, so e even when the objectives are in place, and let's say you're using um, 100x and it's oil immersion, and you're looking at a slide, but you don't want to, you want to flip the image. Well, that's kind of a pain in the ass to do, especially with um, uh, immersion oil, because you'll have to lift it up, take the slide out, roll it all the way down, flip it around, try not to get oil on you, and then put it all the way back up, refocus it, get the oil back on, and that takes a long time. Well, with this, if I want to flip the image, I just, boop, just like that, I flip the image. It's very nice. I don't see this on a lot of modern microscopes. At the college that I go to, we have uh, Nikons and Zeiss and, and a bunch of different brands, Olympus, and not, not, not a lot of them have that function, and I am very appreciative of it. Um, so this microscope is, is rather old. Um, this is 70s. Uh, I really like it, and one of the reasons I like it, and with this stage, so let me spin this thing back around, is the adjustments for X and Y are very, very nice. I love the placement. On modern microscopes, they have that bar that, that sticks down, and it's it's got the two knobs in, in conjunction with each other to move the stage X and Y. Yeah, that's nice. I don't like the style. I like this far better where you can just do this, you can move it, and it's right on the stage, so you don't have to keep moving your hand up and down to you know to, to look at things it's very nice and then of course it has a set screw so that you can keep it um, from moving yada 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 it's a really nice smooth stage it has barely any scratches which is amazing for its age I've uh, seen a lot of eBay ones of these and they're just usually just scratched scratch beyond repair you'll have to put a lot of work on that but it's amazing so this stage it does come off which is a really nice function and then another thing is this is meant to have several different attachments and it's hard to replace attachments on some microscopes. You really have to, to go through a, a, a hassle. Well, this they've thought of that. And if you push this up, you can simply lift off stage units, which easier said than done because this one's quite heavy. And you can just take off entire things which are attached to, to this, um, which was kind of latched in place which is very nice. And the next thing I'll be talking about is the condenser. So this thing has quite an interesting condenser. And I'm going to wait a second and grab something that goes on here, because you'll notice there is an attachment. 
and I've taken it off and I'll tell you why. So that looks a lot different. Uh, this is phase contrast. This is a phase contrast um, uh, diaphragm or whatever they would call it. And it came with the microscope, obviously. And uh, it's phase contrast. And all of my uh, objectives, except for one, are also phase contrast. And when I got it, this phase contrast has a bit of a problem. Um, it doesn't align correctly. And it took me quite a long time to get it aligned to where it would work. Uh, and it, it worked rather well. I, it's one of the better phase contrast I've, I've had the opportunity to work with. And I just don't see a reason for it in my normal day-to-day -day microscopy. I don't use phase contrast. It just doesn't really have a purpose. So it usually just uh, pops right out of there and I usually keep it in a nice little protective case. So that's, um, yeah. So that's usually where that stays. So it does come with phase contrast if anyone wondered. And that's what this is for. And of course you have a place to put various different things you could put uh what is it what would they call it polarized discs in here so you, that you can can do polarized light uh of course you have the normal condenser here which magnifies a tiny bit and uh, you can also add uh colored discs into both of these and currently i have a blue one down below here because um the light that i have is a uh, halogen light uh, then, and it produces a very yellow uh, scheme, and sometimes you don't want that. You want white light, and the best way to do that is to use a blue filter. And, of course, this thing has two blue filters on it because somebody figured that was going to be a problem, and, and it is. Um, but, yeah, so it's got two condensers here, and, of course, this comes off as well. So you can just pop that right on off there. Easier said than done, once again. And this can come right off. So, of course, all of these adjustments with the stage... And with things like this, we're just completely seized. The green grease that held it all together had solidified, and basically when I got it, you could not move anything. Uh, luckily, I had just enough uh, time and enough play so that I, I could get in it, clean out all the old grease, and put in new lithium grease or high vacuum grease, which which did the job as well. Um, so now we're, we're getting to a part which is the biggest problem for this microscope and it's something that that took me quite a while to work on and it's a problem that a commenter asked on my previous video he said that his um his z-axis got stuck and i think this is, is is what he was talking about and it's highly complicated to get in here you could take off this front plate and it doesn't really get you anywhere oftentimes these brass plates will also be layered in lithium grease and that could also seize and there's a larger surface area there and that's what caused most of my problem um, but I wanted to get out all of the old lithium grease from the inside of the thing so what happens and it's a pain to do this because you have to take off this entire side plate to get on the inside is most of this you can't reach the gearing from uh, outside which um, was a major pain but there is a few things there's an adjustment screw over here it's it's it might be harder to see on the video but there's an adjustment screw here and it's um it loosens clockwise direction and it tightens counterclockwise and it, it had a little bar that you could put in there and, and you can strengthen it with of course i don't have the little bar it's probably in some drawer somewhere at the college that's never been looked at since you know 1973 but it, uh, mine was rather tight. It had obviously not been loosened in quite a while, but that is another adjustment that is... It, now, that one's pretty obvious. Now, something I did not know until I just started fooling around with this thing is that you can... that there's another tightness adjustment, and it's with the fine focus. On modern microscopes, usually if, if you turn one wheel one way and one the other way, it can loosen or tighten the assembly. Well, that's not the case with the course, but it is the case with the fine. Right now I'm turning the fine clockwise and the um, my left hand counterclockwise, and it's getting a lot easier to move. And of course it makes this a lot easier to move. Of course if I didn't have this on all the way, it makes it very easy to move. Um, now I didn't know that, and it, it, it doesn't say that in any of the instruction booklets that I had, so I just kind of found it out by accident because I, I guess I was holding onto this side while spinning the other side while trying to clean it. And yeah, it, it loosens it. Quite easy, actually. So, 
yeah, that might not be something that a lot of people know. And there's a lot of little quirks with this microscope that a lot of modern ones don't. So if you've been trained or you use a lot of modern microscopes, it could be a problem for you. Because uh, they have usually adjustment screws like this, but not the way that this one works, even though I like how it works a lot better. Same with the fine film. Um, but that's pretty much it for the stage assembly for X, Y, and Z. Uh, and, as and assembly is just as easy as deassembling it. You just have to line these up, which, once again, easier said than done because it is quite heavy to hold on to. You basically slip that down on there. And now let's do it since I can actually see what I'm doing. And then this just goes all the way to the base, all, all the way to, to the bottom. And yes, you can leave off. Uh, different attachments. Let's say I, I didn't want to put this back on at all, and I just wanted to go bare bones with the stage. I could do that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the overall um, workings of the actual microscope itself, which is kind of nice. So let's say, so if you bought another attachment, but you didn't want to completely change it on your microscope, you could do that. You could just have it as a separate little base. Uh, and you could just have it as a separate base, and you wouldn't actually need to to change it out on your your stage forever. So you see so you could have so you could be kind of wishy-washy and it wouldn't affect it. Yeah, this thing's a little hard to get on though. Especially when you can't see. I think that might be it. There it goes. Really quite hard to see. And then these just get pushed down and locked into place. There we go. These have not been moved in quite a while since I actually got the thing. And then, of course, you can see the stage moves up and down. And as you can see, it drifts a little bit because I loosen that um, set, setting screw. And that's pretty much it for the stage. It's got a few interesting quirks with it that are quite interesting and are very nice to see. And, of course, it just got a bunch of the basics. You know. And it's nice to have face contrast if you ever have the opportunity to use it or you need to use it. Of course, I don't see me using it a whole lot in my academic career, but you never know. It's a nice thing to have, especially a nice thing to have from a research microscope. That's pretty much it for today's video. If you have any questions about the stage assembly, or if I missed something, or if I said something wrong, please, by all means, put it in the comments down below. I'd like to know just as much as, uh, as you would to like to tell me. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's, uh, it's an interesting topic, and you know, there isn't a lot of videos about this microscope. So if somebody had an issue, they start looking on YouTube or something like that, and they don't find many videos, well, they'll get d discouraged, and you know the thing might sit 20, 30 years and finally just get thrown away. So I'm trying to prevent things like that. But until next video, I'd like to thank you and have a wonderful day.